What's going on guys, Robert here from Rob is Tech, and today I'm going to be reviewing my iPod Nano 8GB, or as I use it, my iPod Nano Watch. Had this thing for about a month and a half, and I'm finally able to get my a review on it by using it as a watch every day. Looking at the tech specs real quick, we're going to get a width of about 1.61 inches and a height of about 1.48 inches. The screen itself is just about over an in inch and a half, and the screen resolution is going to be about 240 by 240. No red on display on this bad boy, but it still is readable. And on the top here, we're going to have the volume rocker as well as a power button there to get the device on and on on and off and on the bottom here we're going to have our 30 pin dock connector and of course a headphone jack there's no built-in speakers in the ipod itself now uh navigating the screen is actually pretty simple i haven't had really too many issues and i have pretty big fingers um though the screen is pretty small the text is still readable not crystal clear but in this case you don't really need to be crystal clear uh you know going around and finding music and getting things to play isn't very hard you know tapping on the icon sometimes i have a little bit of trouble as you can see right there but usually as soon as i kind of get it going i can go to the song i can find the song i want kind of navigate or most of the time just put it on shuffle and that works pretty well so i can go navigate to my song and as soon as i find it here i will hit play and then of course i have the regular um, you know, the regular iPod functions of pausing the uh, song, skipping forward, and skipping back to a previous song. So pretty simple and straightforward as far as that goes on that. As far as other customization goes, um, Apple has really kind of stepped it up on providing more clock faces for this, which makes it such of a more unique device to use as a clock. So as you can see here, we have all these different uh, clock faces on here, such as Mickey Mouse and other cartoon characters as this purple guy here, which I have no idea who it is, uh, all the way to the simple ones, which was originally on the first iPod Nano of this revision, sixth generation, I believe, to simple ones to more complex ones like this. Apple has really stepped it up. I think they're encouraging this kind of hobby as it is right now, and it's pretty cool. So there's my simple one I like to read. It's easy uh, to read, and it's pretty cool, and you can set different clock faces, and uh, you're all set, ready to go, and uh, it looks very well and pretty easy to read. And as far as um, other customization goes on the device, you do have the ability to change the wallpaper, but that's as far as it really goes. People need to understand as well that this is not actually iOS. This isn't the same operating system as on the iPhones and the iPads and the iPod Touches. This is its completely own operating system, the iPod software, that the basically the Apple uh, engineers and developers have made look like iOS. It's a little bit more easy and familiar to navigate, but it doesn't connect to Wi-Fi. It doesn't do other things. It has app icons, but there's no app store. Or there's no way to put apps on here. It's a very, very simple and straightforward device. And for the price, it's pretty much what you expect. You can't put photos on here, but haven't really experimented with that too much. Another cool thing about using this as an iPod, uh, using this iPod as a watch, is the ability to rotate the screen to any orientation that you're using. So if you, whether you use the uh, wristwatch, if whether you wear your watch, or in this case your Nano on your left wrist or your right right wrist, you have the ability to orientate that screen and to switch it into whichever way you're using it, so which is pretty cool. And if you're wondering which iPod band I'm using, it's the Hex Band by, like I just said, Hex. I got it at the Apple Store retails for about $60, $70. Of course, that's the Apple Store, so look on Amazon. Uh, there's a variety of different watch bands for the iPod Nano. This one is made out of metal. It just clips in there with the iPod Nano in the back. Uh, really easy to get on and off, adjustable. It's a very, very nice watch band, so I like it. But you can pick out whichever one you want uh, online to search around. And then comparing the iPod Nano to a regular or a bigger style watch, as you can see right here, the iPod Nano is actually really nice. You know, those other big watches are kind of bulky and heavy, and the iPod Nano has, I'm sure, um, you know, a clock face that you might like, and also the ability to change as well. You can see it here on my wrist, kind of trying to maneuver to the camera. Uh, it's very easy to keep on there, doesn't really bother me at all. Of course, once you get used to having a watch on your wrist, it's really easy, and um, I, I like it. It's pretty comfortable, and I love using it as a watch, and I can kind of switch it out and move it kind of around my wrist. And just a tip, of course, for wanting to keep this as a watch, make sure the time on wake function in the preferences is turned on. Uh, turned on. So when you turn on the device, uh, you don't get the uh, home screen like you would by default. And really quickly here, the battery life on this device is pretty good. I only charge it about once a week, and I don't really use it too much. I just kind of use it for a watch. I don't really play music on there, but once a week seems to be the key for me. So the battery life is pretty well on there with uh, default brightness. 
And another tip for anyone trying to use this as a watch is to make sure that you, if you really want to keep it on, you don't want to have to hit that power button, you just want to be able to look down wherever you can. Uh, you can keep a stopwatch on in the background. That's the only way you can do it as of this recording, is to keep a stopwatch on in the background. That will prevent the display from sleeping. So instead of having to hit the power button to uh, see what the uh, current time is, you can keep that going and the display will not sleep. Of course, your battery life is going to be cut down, but if you're looking to charge it every night, uh, you should be good. That's, uh, that's a nice little trick to keep the display on and prevent it from sleeping. Now, of course, one of the other biggest things about this watch that everyone loves is that it is a conversation piece. Obviously, you don't see many other people with an iPod Nano watch. I've only seen one other person who actually has something similar to this, which is a blue iPod Nano and stuff like that. Uh, but I always get questions every single day, literally every day, from a student, from a teacher, from someone walking you know, down the street who passes me. You know, everyone wants to know, is that an iPod? You know, what does it do? Is that a watch band? Where'd you get that? It's actually in, in not really high demand, but it's really, uh, people are really curious about them. They would like to know where they could get their own. Um, so that's one of the, I guess, the biggest uh, pros in my case. Um, and of course, you know, I, I mentioned other things that I liked about it, like battery life, customization, stuff like that. I really think that, you know, in the pros category, it's really nice. If you're gonna go out and spend a couple hundred dollars on a watch, why not get a kind of watch that would hold your music as well? Uh, that is customized, you can pick the color, pick different watch bands, all that stuff. Now, of course, you might not be able to hold all your music on it. Uh, of course, you're kind of limited with all that other stuff. You're not gonna be able to replace an iPod or uh, an iPad, but it, at least it'll hold your music. It has Nike Fitness Plus built in so you could track uh, running times and things like that. And also a radio if you were to use that. Now, the only cons I really have about this watch is first off, the price. It is really expensive. With eight gigabytes, the baseline model coming in at $130, which is expensive, but if you're just getting it as an iPod, well, it's kind of a nice little, um, nice little low barrier to entry. The other problem is getting a watch band. These watch bands are really expensive. Of course, the Apple Store, which I chose to get mine at, is going to be probably the most expensive place to get one. Lunatic would make some really nice watch bands. They have some metal ones. This, like I said before, I believe is a hex a watch band. I got this from the Apple Store. This, the watch band itself was like half what the iPod Nano cost. It was about $79, $80, I think, uh, or you know, 70 or 80 bucks from the Apple Store. Not cheap, but like I said, uh, I'm actually pretty happy I got this thing after about a month and a half of using it. I'm pretty happy and I think it's, I, I'm, it's worth it that I have it uh, and I like it. And uh, I think the other cons would probably be that you know, obviously you can't really do much with it. If you're looking to, you know, have some kind of uh, weather built in, like weather widgets or news widgets or things like that, which would be really nice, um, it's just not gonna happen. You know, we all know that Amazon put three, free 3G in the Kindle. They didn't have to pay for that, the users didn't. It'd be kind of nice if a Apple could put a little 3G or Edge chip in there with no cost to us monthly, monthly, that would just kind of uh, sit there and kind of get weather updates and kind of geolocate us in some way that would give us, you know, weather updates news updates, stuff like that, which would be nice, but maybe that might be coming in the future iterations of a new iWatch, technically. Again, this is an iPod put on a watch band, so it's first and foremost just an iPod. But I think that, you know, after, like I said, when it's all said and done, I'm pretty happy that I got it. Um, it's expensive, but like I said, um, you know, I use it all the time. I find myself really using it from going from a casual kind of watch guy to really using this all the time in class. Besides being a conversation piece, I do use it. Uh, especially when I'm out walking around, it's kind of nice to have this instead of the headphones going into my iPhone in, the po in my pocket. It's really nice, and now I don't have to get another watch for a couple years and I can have this thing. So uh, I guess it really kind of pays itself off uh, when you think about it that way. So what did you guys think of my video? All right, guys, so that is going to be it for me today on this iPod Nano watch. What do you guys think? Do you think that there's going to be some kind of Android competitor watch to it? Are we going to get into the watch market? Is Apple even going to make an, uh, an actual serious iWatch or a competitor the watch market, or are they just kind of going to let the hobbyists do their thing? Uh, and what do you guys think the features should be added to this? Do you guys think that there should be Wi-Fi built in or things like that? Let me know in the comments below. Thumbs up the video if you liked it, if you like these styles or reviews. Do you guys like me talking more? Because I can blab on forever. Or do you guys kind of like the nice cut voiceover stuff? of the shots on the little product table over there. Stay tuned, I got some cool stuff coming. This space that I'm in right now will be kind of turned into a cool set. Make sure you stay tuned in the coming months to see what I'm gonna be doing with this. And I'll leave a comment below on what other video you guys, you guys would like to see from me. That's my iPod Nano review. Thanks so much for watching guys and I will catch you guys in the next video.